Hi, very nice to uh, meet you all online. Uh, my name is Hertis. I come from the University of Iceland, um, and I was asked to come and tell you a little bit about the Icelandic Research Network um, on the well-being of, of children and, and families. So this is a research network that doesn't exist yet, but will exist uh, soon. So what can I tell you about it? I will start, I think, by telling you a little bit about the background and where this is, um, this is coming from. So in uh, 2021, the Icelandic Parliament um, passed the Act on the Integration of Services in the Interest of Children's Prosperity, or the Prosperity Act. And this uh, came into effect in, in January 2022, with uh, the idea that the implementation phase would take three to five years. Um, the main idea of this act, as it says, is, is to integrate services for children, but basically to break down the walls between different systems and make sure that children get the assistance and service they need as early as, as possible. And so this is done by children who need early assistant, uh, assistance getting access to a specific coordinator. And so this coordinator is not necessarily a social worker from the social services, but someone who works in the daily environment of the child. So for example, a teacher in the school, someone who works in the healthcare system, daycare system, or basically anyone who the child um, sees regularly according to their age and, and circumstances. And then if the child needs more targeted or specialized assistance, then they are assigned a case manager at the social services. And then the idea is that this coordinator or case manager is going to lead the child's case within the system and make sure that there is cooperation between families and between different, um, different service providers. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing uh, for us as researchers is that this act was very much motivated by, uh, by research and um, it was kind of unusual in the public debate how much talk there was about uh, underlying research. And so the motivation was, you know, uh, lying in the research that shows that it is important and valuable to uh, act early on in the, in the life of children. So this is, for example, um, research that probably many of you know by Nobel laureate uh, James Hackman showing that the highest rate of economic returns come from the earliest investment in children. And so the graph here on the, on the slide is um, showing this that, you know, you get the highest return if you put money into programs uh, for young children, and then the return gets lower as, as, the children, um, as the children are older. So the idea is that we kind of catch the children as, as early as possible. And then there is also uh, a recent study showing kind of the same thing. So this is a paper that looks at... Um, the, uh, the marginal value of public funds for different programs. So basically, you know, if the government puts dollar in, how much can it expect to get in value from, from different social, uh, social act programs? And what we see in this picture is this marginal value of public funds based on the age of the beneficiaries. And so this is showing very much the same as the Hackman curve that we get by way the highest return when we put money into programs that are targeted uh, towards children. And so what this paper also shows is that it's especially programs that have to do with education and healthcare of children from low income families where we get very high uh, marginal value of, of public funds. And so this is you know, where this new act comes from. And then as a part of the implementation of this act, uh, the Minister of Education and Children made an agreement with the University of Iceland, uh, where the university is supposed to lead the development of interdisciplinary teaching and research uh, for the integration of service and the benefit of children's uh, prosperity. 
And so the, <clears throat> the agreement, which is based at the Faculty of Social Work, um, means that uh, we have two main uh, tasks or projects. So the first one is to establish a new postgraduate diploma on children's prosperity. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a, in a minute. And then there is the research network on the well-being of children and, and families. So I want to tell you a little bit about the diploma. And even though I'm here to talk about the research network, but it's mainly because I think it's very nice the way this act has been implemented so far with a focus on the interaction between research and teaching and what we what we do in, in practice. And so this diploma has been a very big part of um, what we are doing at the university, but also a very big part of the implementation of this, um, of this act. And so what we have in this diploma um, we have a target group of people who have finished an undergraduate degree and people who are currently working with children. And so these are people from the healthcare system, from childcare, from the school system, social services. We even have a few from uh, the police um, in, in the program. So people from all over, but, but have the common, uh, have in common that they do some work with, with children. And so the aim of this diploma was to um, was to provide specialized knowledge or, or knowledge of children's issues. But of course, many of our students already have uh, great knowledge of children's issues. So our task was more to, you know, create a mutual language for people who come from from different fields with different expertise, and then of course to um, teach them about this Prosperity Act, how it's implemented, how it can be useful in practice and support their, their work with children. And there was a big focus on, on teamwork and interdisciplinary um, collaboration. Um, so the program, as I said, very much based on uh, practical knowledge on you know, how to work with children, how to talk with children, and also on this new legislation and how it's implemented. Um, we just graduated the first cohort with 107 students. And, you know, Iceland is a, has a population of 370,000 people. So it's pretty good to have uh, 107 students the first time you you offer a, offer a study line. And now we just received our um, applications for next year and we uh, received 180 applications for the, for, for the program next year. Um, <clears throat> as I said, the idea with the program is that it's for people who work with children and it is thought of as a diploma where you study alongside your work. So these people continue to work with children uh, while they are um, studying. And this is this picture is showing where uh, people in our program are coming from. Uh, you can see that 25% are coming from the school system. Around 20% are coming from the preschool or daycare system, and then around 30% are coming from the from the social services. So this was last year. What we missed a little bit were uh, people from the healthcare services and people who work with teenagers. So people who are in secondary schools, high schools, or do after school after school activities with with teenagers. But it seems, you know, scanning through the application for this year that we are actually getting these groups um, in um, this year. So <clears throat> the teaching was online and the idea was to enable people from all over the country to participate. It was live streaming, no uh, pre-recording or no recording of the lectures done. And that was because it was very important for us that students participated in the classes. And even though it was online, it was very much based on group discussions and also on discussions in the whole classroom back and forth. And then four times over the year, we had meetings at the university where we actually got to uh, meet the students in, in person. And then another thing that was very important and valuable in, in the program was that in the beginning, we assigned people to 
fixed study groups that uh, they stayed in the whole uh, the whole year. And these groups were mixed in the sense that we uh, tried as best as we could to mix in the groups different occupations and different places of work, different uh, locations, etc., with this motivation that people would collaborate across different uh, disciplines, different workplaces, um, etc. And then these groups met weekly, discussed some assigned topics, um, and then there were very applied assignments based on real life cases, both individual assignments and, and group assignments. Um, the teaching was done by various experts and university teachers, so both from the Faculty of Social Work, School of Education, we also had people, uh, we actually had the Minister of Education and Children uh, come, on and give, come in and give a lecture. We had people from UNICEF, uh, various people from different municipalities, and several people from the National Agency for Children and, and Families. Um, so the reason I wanted to tell you a little bit about the teaching is that, you know, the, the teaching, of course, was based on this law that had just been introduced and we were teaching them about the law. We were also teaching a lot about relevant research on, on children and, and prosperity. But at the same time, we had a group of students uh, with um, so over 100 students with a lot of expertise with lots of experience in working with children and because the the program was so much based on conversation group discussions and also us talking to um, to the students uh, we also got to hear a lot about you know what they see in in um, different areas as the main challenges for example of how to implement this act of prosperity but also what are the main challenges in working with, with children today, in working with families, uh, where it's difficult for different systems to talk together, etc. And that was very valuable, both for the policymakers. So we had people from the ministry coming in and listening to the students, but also for us as researchers, because we get to hear about you know, what's actually going on and you know you kind of get research that this this is something we should look at this is something where it's important to do more research etc so it really was this conversation i think between you know teaching and research and policy and what people are doing in in practice um so then uh, about the the research network, um, <clears throat> the idea with the, the research network is, of course, to strengthen the network of researchers who work on um, topics that relate to children's well-being and prosperity. So, for example, research on the impact of social health and educational uh, services on children's lives, living conditions and uh, life satisfactions in both the short and in the long term. And so we want to create a platform for interdisciplinary discussions and hopefully also collaborations, and then also to encourage international collaborations. And then the, um, the idea is to use also various methods, data, and different approaches to assess whether and how this Prosperity Act has, been, um, has worked and, and whether it's been effective. Um, the network is supposed to be both academic and practical, so of course it's based on academic research, but we are also going to have regular meetings and conversations with the, with the Ministry of Education and Children and with the National Agency for, for Children and, and Families. Um, we have now uh, we are now four people in the board of of this research network. So it's me. Uh, I'm at the Faculty of Social Work, but I have a PhD in in economics. And then it's uh, Ragnar who is here. So she is has an MA in social work and is also at the Faculty of Social Work. And then we have Artna who is an epidemiologist and Ragni, who uh, is from the School of, of Education. So we're already covering, I think, uh, 
um, several important fields where people do research on the well-being of, of children, but of course the, the idea is to expand, um, expand it further. As I said in the beginning, we haven't really started, but uh, we had a pre-meeting, uh, sort of a warm-up meeting in May, where we gathered uh, 30 to 40 researchers and, and uh, discussed data availability. So we have different groups collecting different data that has to do with the well-being of children and families, and we thought it was an important starting point that we would talk together and hear, you know, what kind of data is being collected, where are there gaps, what, you know, what do we need more, um, what can we do with the data that we already have, etc. Um, but the formal start of the network is going to be in, in September, so then the ministry is organizing a big uh, meeting on, on children's prosperity, and the idea is that then the, the research network will be formally introduced. Um, our idea uh, so far is to, is to um, you know, get our goals by having regular workshops and conferences where we both uh, um, talk uh, or have discussions between different different fields uh, within the university, but also where we have the opportunity to talk to international uh, researchers and and hopefully also collaborate with uh, with international research networks and and researchers. Uh, we think this is uh, the, the network may also uh, bring people together to work on, on funding applications and hopefully uh, we will find ways to support uh, PhD and MA projects in the, in the field of uh, children's prosperity. And then we are working on setting up a website where we are going to keep together all the information on, on research um, on children's well-being in, um, in Iceland or, or by researchers in the, in the network. So this is basically where we're at. Um, we are very happy to uh, participate here in your network and hear a little bit about uh, how you are doing things and what has worked well and what hasn't worked well. Um, um, in your research network. And as I said, we are very much um, working on getting this started at the moment. So if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, I guess we have a few minutes for it now, but uh, you can also email me um, later if, if you want to reach out. Thank you.